Hello wonderful people, welcome to Big Dino Plays, Kingdom Death, people of the Dream Keeper, the people of Hogsmeade. We're in Lantern Year 15 as you can see. We are absolutely cruising. We have this year and then we will face a butcher in the next year at, at uh, level 2 butcher. Feel pretty confident about that one, less confident about Atmos coming a few years later. Um, and very excited to face off against the Gambler in Lantern Year 20. Um, I've finished the paint job, he's ready to go, so we've done a great job. Uh, we're going to face a level 3 Crimson Croc this year. I was contemplating some level 3 um, Smog Singers, but we'll go the Croc. I feel a little bit more confident facing that, given that it is trying to attack us, whereas the Smog Singers just seem to be trying to make us cry. Um, I've moved a few things around. We've got some um, slightly changed uh, weapon sets and equipment. So I'll show you um, uh, those on here. So Dumbledore, um, oh, you can see here I'm also doing uh, the tracking from this point. We'll see if I can remember to do the tracking. <laughs> uh, so uh, in case you weren't wondering, uh, you can actually click on them to say that uh, they've um, the monster's had its turn, uh, Dumbledore's had its turn, etc. And then you can also reset the round, and then you can uh, you can mark uh, individual actions when you use them. As you get on in the game, it, it, um, you know there's a lot of timing things that are that are challenging. It's usually pretty easy to manage it early on, but we're going to try and use that um, properly. Um, but so yeah, we'll just go to Dumbledore's loadout. Um, really excited about this loadout. So we've gone, we've gone the Blood Drinker. We made the Blood Drinker axe. Um, the Blood Drinker has plus three strength for each one of its bleeding tokens. Dumbledore has taken the Crimson Pearls, and so he's going to rock into the start of the combat with five bleeding tokens, one away from death, <laughs> one away from death, which is slightly suboptimal. Uh, but we will be able to surge to use bandages should we need to, um, or potentially we'll surge in the first turn to utilize uh, our departing, um, or sorry, our, our buff, which will take us from three armor to eight armor and nine at the arms location. Um, oh, as the fight progresses, Blood Drinker will uh, get progressively weaker but Dumbledore's risk of dying from bleeding tokens will get progressively less. It's an interesting um, push-pull mechanic that I'm really excited to try out. Uh, Ginny, we've, we've shifted Ginny over um, onto the leather set. Uh, she is going to be wielding the whip still, but it's with the leather set now. Unfortunately, the, the whip will not be razor sharp against super dense locations. There's, there's no way for me to... I may change my mind on that, actually. I could make it, um, but I'd have to forego the extra evasion from Monster Grease. Maybe that's a better option at this point. Uh, I'll come back to that. I'll think about that in a second. Um, Nagini, uh, wielding the Rawhide set. We have got a Dry Decanthus in this location. And uh, Neville. So Neville's our um, axe specialist. He is rocking with, uh, I'll change this to say Phoenix Axe. Um, he's rocking the new axe, uh, the, um, no, he's not an axe specialist, sorry, he's our shield specialist, Dumbledore's our axe specialist. Um, we would just want to tag a shield wound and then we're going to switch over to Dome Buster. Uh, the Mighty Bone Axe is purely there to tag the Phoenix Helm so we get a start of um, uh, encounter evasion. Uh, so Neville has optimism, he has positivity, um, and important, when you depart, if your total number of armor points is higher than each other departing survivors, you are full of confidence, gain survival up to the settlement's survival limit. So we may find Neville doesn't do anything this fight except for try and make a wound with a shield so that he can finish this uh, battle at the uh, at, um, survival limit and gain a progress. Uh, Neville is going to be really, really hard to kill. He's got reducing damage by every hit suffered by one. Um, he's going to get plus one to severe injury rolls. 
he feels like a really tough dude to kill. So excited about Neville. Um, Narcissa is our scout. Uh, we've got Guardian on her, so she's going to be able to provide two rerolls, and uh, and Neville will walk in with a reroll token as well. So feeling very, very, very good about uh, this hunting party, and I feel like this fight against the Croc should be a very comfortable, manageable fight. I did think that last time, and what I found as we went into things, that um, it got progressively harder <laughs> because of the hunt phase really cooking us um, and giving us very little uh, stuff to work with. So. Oh, we've got one of the new ones on top. Uh, let's depart. Uh, and so, we'll just review everything here. So when you depart, if your total number of armor points is higher than each other departing survivors, you are full of confidence. Gain survival up to the settlement limit. Um, and on arrival, if your survival is at the settlement survival limit, gain a reroll token, very good. So nothing there. Narcissa, Physiognomy we know, Stone Architect we know. I, can't, I figured something out before that was just awesome. So we've got Sword Mastery in the settlement, which means everyone is a sword specialist. And we have a, a sword and shield style, which means if you have sword specialization, you also have shield specialization. So if anyone's got sword and shield style, uh, you're a shield master or shield specialist, which is awesome. So we want to definitely do that um, some more. Uh, you may not depart if you have the highest strength amongst all survivors. Neville has strength five, so he is fine on that front. Qatar specialization, great. Ginny, selfish, can't encourage, no problems. When you depart, gain two survival tokens. Give her two survival tokens, Ginny. Dumbledore, uh, he may not depart if he has the highest strength. That's okay. We have strength five on Neville. Um, and he doesn't have any stinky gear in his gear grid. So we'll kick off. Uh, oh, we do need to do uh, the blood drinker set. So he gains two bleeding tokens now. And he gains one armor to that. And uh, we'll go on to our first hunt phase, and we get an Ark Survivor Hunt event. Every time I've rolled on this chart, I've rolled a six. A Lantern 10, Bug Hunting Fiasco. Uh, ahead, the sweet scent of decay fills the stilted air. If there are any verminists in the group, we do not have a verminist. Roll 1d5 random hunt events. Verminists gain a random resource. No. If other others may abandon the implacable verminists to their inevitable death to avoid the delay. If there is a collectivist in the party, they will refuse this option. We do not have a verminist, which is fortunate. So we will move on to the next event, which is a crocodile event, and that will be Ginny as our a crawling finger. Choose one event. Three plus courage, yes. Three plus understanding. Three plus understanding and a pickaxe. Um, so we can choose any of those options except for the pickaxe one. Um, I hope gathering is right before the croc, by the way. Uh, do we want to gain the pale fingers crimson croc resource or do we want to skip the next space on the hunting board? Um, I feel like we're going to get enough resources. We'll skip the next hunt space. So, good work, Ginny. Next event is another basic one. It's a random event. Uh, and so we will do yellow first. 43.
fresh kill. Yeah, carpet of skittering bugs. Uh, each survivor rolls 2t10 and adds their hunt XP. The highest scoring survivor slays the most vermin. Gain a random basic resource and a random vermin resource. Okay, so top down, 23. Uh, not more than 23. Nagini, not more than 23. Neville, not more than 23. Narcissa. Not more than 23. Dumbledore picks himself up a vermin resource and a basic resource. The vermin resource he gets is a sword beetle. And the basic resource that he gets is a monster bone. Croc event. Uh, one, two, three. On Neville himself. Lady in the Blood Lake. Uh, we will not do that. I remember that one is not positive. 21. La, 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 la. Drawings. Oh, we have pictographs. We did pictographs. And two survival and a random fighting art. Great. Um, okay, so each survivor gets to roll and add plus four to their rolls. So we'll start at the top. A one plus four is a five, so Dumbledore gains an insanity. Next person is a nine. So Ginny. Okay, and two survival and a random fighting art, which will do Voltless. Uh, so let's actually use this app and do it. Random fighting art, add one random fighting art, glass mask. Very good. Um, we'll worry about that Voltless in a second. Uh, Nagini, she rolls a 10, so she is the same. Two survival and a random fighting art. Clutch fighter, oh, that's a good one actually, for bleeding tokens. Uh, next person is Neville. Neville rolls a six, plus four is 10. He gains two survival, he's at max survival. He gains a random fighting art. And he gains Orator of Death, mm, fine. Uh, Narcissa, a five plus four is nine. Gain two survival and a random fighting art. Monster claw style, wow. Okay, so we have some voltless rolls to do. And we're about to move into overwhelming darkness. Voltless, okay. So, uh, we don't really want to do do we want to press through on any of these so Narcissa monster claw she does not so she is going to explore the maze she rolls a nine she gains a loony uh, Neville Orator of Death, he is also going to roll a 9. He's not going to take that, and he's going to gain a Lumi. Nagini, Clutch Fighter. Uh, no, we don't really want Clutch Fighter. Uh, 10. Gain 2 Lumi. Ooh. We don't have a thingy. 30. Stuff, lose clutch fighter, and Ginny, glass mask, we don't want glass mask, so Ginny rolls a two, which means she gains a Lumi. Cool. We'll move back to the croc page, and we're gonna do some overwhelming darkness, which will be Narcissa. 
Uh, I know all of these rolls pretty much by heart, but we'll roll them anyway. Overwhelming darkness. Path of the Brave, because we have Song of the Brave. Uh, first person will be Dumbledore. Dumbledore will roll an eight, which is suffer one event damage to your arms. Perfect. Ginny. Ginny rolls a one. Uh, she will lose a courage. She doesn't want a person. Uh, Nagini. She rolls a six. Uh, gain an evasion token, but everyone else gets a survival except for her. She's already at max though. But everyone else gets a survival and we'll ignore that evasion token. Neville. Neville gets a four. He's the same. Everyone gets a survival. He's at max. And he will discard his minus one evasion token. And finally, nine for Narcissa. She will suffer one event damage to the arms. And she is done. That is the end of Overwhelming Darkness. We're back to here. We have another crocodile event. This will be one, two, three, four, five. Back to the top. Missing faces. Um, Survivor Investigate can be Ginny. She rolls a 10. Another Survivor. Like we don't have enough. We've got way too many survivors. Uh, female. Um, um, who haven't I used yet? Um, I'm running out of names from Harry Potter. What's uh, what's Hagrid's giant? Chick's name. I don't know. Giant lady. Her name will come to me. Thank you for missing faces. We have another one of these and we flip a random hunt event and we roll... 30. Rotten faces. Cool. As each survivor rolls 1d10. Start to the top. Dumbledore. An 8. You escape without incident. Ginny, a six. You escape without incident. McGinny, a four. Spend one survival to escape. Neville, the only one we want to roll good on. Guaranteed, a two. Whew. Spend one survival and escape. And finally, Narcissa, a two, spend one survival or escape. Wonderful. Thank you, Rotten Faces. We'll go to here. We have a random hunt event. 27. Oh no. Um. Choose one random male survivor. Uh, so that will be. I've only got two. So that'll be Neville. Neville's got destroyed genitals. Oh no. He needs to roll six plus or he's got destroyed genitals. A one. Neville! No! Neville! Destroyed genitals. Wrong thing. 
Uh, gain a random disorder. Gain a bleeding token. Poor Nev. Did he have... Uh, no, he does not have... Drydecanthus. What a shame. Random disorder for Neville. Uh, we'll just do it this way. Random disorder. Oh, fear of the dark. Neville, 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 Neville. That is very unfortunate, and I'm very unhappy about that. We can try to clear that disorder, though, so we'll definitely try to do that. Uh, herb gathering. First of all, everyone gains a survival from herb gathering. Uh, we have no one who's dreamless, so... Manage to party survivors, and then we shall roll on the herb gathering chart. Do I want to worry about that? I don't think we... Did we take cooking? Did I take cooking? I did take cooking, okay, so the last option becomes pretty good now. All right, one, two, three. Five, six, and two is... Uh, 11, 13, 23, plus nothing, plus nothing, plus uh, 9, 16, 23, 39, plus last one, 8, 2, and 5. So we get to the 45, which is two fresh acanthus, one random vermin resource, and we all gain three survival. Vermin resource. Nightmare tick. Should shuffle those things. Fresh acanthus. Fresh acanthus. You're at max survival on everyone. Uh, final hunt event. I don't know who it is, but we'll flip and see if it matters. Blood glass shards. The event revealer may investigate or follow the trail. Uh, is anyone have understanding six? No one does, so it doesn't matter. We have to follow the trail. Um... And uh, so, who was it? it? Was one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So the event revealer is Neville, and Neville rolls a seven, gain one understanding, and roll a random hunt event. Good work, Nev. Twenty-nine. Ooh, a dark blacksmith. Steel shield would be nice. No one has honorable. Uh, who can actually go? Nagini or Ginny? We could give him the dry decanthus. Or the bone sickle. The bone sickle's pretty easy to re repair. I'll tell you what, I might give him a bone sickle. Yep, we'll do that. And I'll remake the bone sickle. And we'll see if we can roll a 7 to 8 and get a steel shield. We don't have honourable, so we don't add plus 3. So it's a 10. Steel sword. I only want steel sword. <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's a good weapon. Barb. 
Perfect honor, perfect hit. All right, steel sword, it's all yours. We make it to the showdown, friends. Let us commence what will be, hopefully, a very successful hunt for us. Okay, so A, A, B, 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 L, B, A, A, B, B, A, B, 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 A, B, B, L, 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 A, A. Six of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two off. 12 of these, I think there was 12 of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Great, they are all in. And two legendaries. These two, in and in. Done, over here, that goes there. We'll shuffle this deck, boom, 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 cut. And Enchanted Flesh. Done. Plus two speed, plus two damage, Blood Secret. You're irreplaceable. Uh, so we have a Survivor Corpse and a Blood Pool. Uh, we will also flip a few extra terrain cards. So we have, uh, let's apply our arrival bonuses. If we have any, I don't think we do, other than um, our Dumbledore going to five bleeding tokens. And no one else has arrival bonuses. Uh, we get two survival tokens, and we also gain a reroll token thanks to optimism. And Neville has optimism. If you arrive at the showdown, the survival settlement gain one reroll token. Uh, first, tall grass, perfect. Stone columns, don't care. Ore vein, pretty good. So we have physiognomy on uh, Narcissa. Neville has positivity. Nagini has I'm a car. Yeah, that. Ginny has selfish and tenacity, so that's great. Gotta remember her atelophobia. And Dumbledore. All fine. All right, I will set up this map over here and we will get started facing off against this dude. Uh, who do we want to be the target of the attack? It is probably Neville. Neville. Leather, Scout, Dude, Dude. Uh, and then the Ore Vein is set up six bases away from all other terrain. Scouty can get ready to carve that up. And I think we are all done. Monsters, Basso, Dilated Game, Super Dance. Yep. Blood pool, nobody's got terrified because we all have insanity. Uh, Neville gained a evasion token and plus two movement because he is insane. Uh, it's time to kick off. 
we begin and we draw. Haunting bite. Survivor that last suffered damage. There is none. So we go to a finger strum. That's not really what we wanted. Finger strum. All non-deaf survivors suffer three brain damage. Boom. Managed departing survivors. One, two, three. Uh, no one is terrified. Neville's now not insane, but he's not using the um, Phoenix Placard ability. So, um, Haunting Bite, done. Uh, let's think. Let's think. So, what is our goal? Our first goal is to level up. So let's do Narcissa. She'll spend a survival. She doesn't need to dash. She's speed four. One, two, three, four. And she will swing with the... She's going to front because she has to, because of physiognomy. She'll swing with the grim jaw. Actually, before we do this, I need to think because I, I remember I tried to do this last time and it didn't work. Because she's uh, she's only strength three, the sword's four, it's fifteen, it's an eight to wound. So retract that. We will start with the blood drinker. Um, and so he is going to spend a survival to add five. One, two, three. And then he's going to uh, use his action to drop his bleeding tokens like that. And then he's going to move one to there. Yep. Dumbledore done. And he surged. Close. Okay. He's done. So what we really ideally want now is a uh, hit location on there that's going to help uh, Dumbledore with the blood drinker. Ginny, Ginny has the diamond scab Qatar. Is that right? No, she has the fingernail whip. So that's a good option for us. So Ginny's going to go, she's going to spend a survival to dash. And then she's going to gain a survival back by spending one of her survival tokens. Uh, so we'll just mark that we've done her turn. She's done a dash. And she's going to move one, two, three, four, five. And then she's going to move into the rear. And she's going to swing with the fingernail whip. So she has no accuracy, a four and a six is two hits. We get super dense and bul bulging neck, great. So we'll do it in this order. Um, she has whip proficiency. Uh, she did not roll a perfect hit, so she suffers a brain damage, suboptimal. Um, and so the whip specialization just lets her do a thing, so that's fine. So she's going to use yellow. She's going to do this one first. Uh, she's got super dense, which means that it is razor sharp. She is strength four. And the, uh, let's just have a look at what the whip says here. Eight. So she's eight and it's toughness 15. So she needs a seven on these two dice. She rolls a nine. Does she have a luck? No, she does not. There's no crit anyway. So we do a coagulated hit location and we discard that. This is what we wanted with the dagger. Oh, perfect. This is perfect, Deno. And now she will attempt to wound this one. And that is also a wound. The 99 finger spine is not. So we've got two wounds. One... Two. 
The monster's then going to roll away to the right. Speed 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to there. Which is going to trigger a monster moving away. We get Relentless 2. We're also going to gain another thing from our spending our survival token. Um, that's her done. So we know there's the coagulated hit location on the top now. So we're going to send the scout in. One, two, three. And Narcissa is in the front. So she's facing the front. She can hit from there. Uh, nothing else. She doesn't need to use Guardian. Uh, rolling with the Grimjaw. Three, eight, eight. She has no accuracy, so that's two hits. We get that hit location. Oh, it's not plus one. It's not plus five. All right. We'll do this one. Uh, uh, we need a eight, I think. So we'll just have a look over here. There's no strength buffs. So Grimjaw's a seven. His toughness, 15. So we need an eight to wound. Come on. No, two's a failure. Full move of the monster away from the attacker and turn to face them. Suffer the frenzy brain trauma. Uh, so frenzy brain trauma is 1d5 insanity, which means she takes four damage to random hit locations. Head, head, hands, waist. Head, head, hands, waist. She is knocked down. And uh, Frenzy means she gets plus one strength, plus one speed. She can't spend survival. You start using these now. Narcissa Dunn has no survival left to spend. Uh, I think Nagini will move uh, into the pool. Actually, she'll dash to there. Spend a survival. Um, and then she will why have I got Nagini in green? What's your loadout in green, Nagini? Great. <laughs> yep, she'll use the uh, blood pool. She rolls a five which is gain three insanity. And then she will use her move to just diagonally go into the middle of the blood pool. Um, and she uses that. And does she spend a survival to... Do we want immortal? I uh, know she'll she'll surge. Seven, another three insanity. One, two, three. That's good. Just leaving Neville. Neville will uh, move into the blood pool and he will drink from the blood pool. He gets an eight, which gets him three insanity. Is 
is done. Uh, crocodile. Repeating bite. Place a token on this card. Chomp, chomp, chomp. The closest threat in facing in range. Note the closest survivor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we can't dash with her. So Narcissa could be in real trouble here. Yeah, we are in real trouble. What about one, two, three, four? Nope, there's no way for us to get in range with anyone. So it's just going to be straight here and attack the scout. Could be okay. Um, speed 2 goes to speed 4. 3 plus uh, on Narcissa goes to 4 plus. So 2 misses, 2 hits. Narcissa cannot spend survival because she is frenzied. Head and the waist. Head and the waist. That's a severe injury roll and a severe injury roll. <laughs> yep. So the head, a one. So that is a head explosion. Uh, it's not because she has plus one. Uh, She will spend her lifetime reroll. Damn. Five, which goes to six. And she suffers a severe injury and gains a progress. Death. Bad for us. Uh, and then the waste severe injury roll. Oh. That's a four, which goes to a five, which is a warped pelvis. Oh, Narcissa, what are you doing? Gain a bleeding token, suffers another severe injury. At this point, do we try and crank her wounds? Uh, that's it, that's the end of his turn, it's our turn. That goes back on top of the deck. <laughs> she stands up. move to there. So I've got a choice here. I can I can try and let it die, suffer severe injuries, and and upgrade Stoneheart. It feels like not a bad option. I can't see any other way of doing it. So we might try and flick the wound right now with the Grimjaw. Uh, two nines is two hits. We have no luck. Here is a basso dilated. Oh, the trap. Oh, yep, we don't, uh, we don't flip the trap. <laughs> Blood secret. Cancel it, discard it, then flip this to diffuse a heart. The monster gains plus two damage, plus two movement, and draws plus one AI card every turn. At the end of each round, place a death card, a death count token on this card. <laughs> We're in so much trouble. But here's me saying I was in great shape. <laughs> That's her turn over. Do I, do I let him just repeating bite? Because I know it's going to kill her. I'm, I'm inclined to do that, right? So... Let's just get these people into here and drink from the blood pool. Uh, so her, 
she gets three insanity. One, two, three. Nagini will do it from the middle first. She gets three insanity. And Neville. So he'll go into the middle, so we can't possibly gain hemophobia. He gets three insanity. And then uh, he's going to put up a block and stand in the tall grass. Dumbly. And he will move diagonally when he moves around in the tall grass. This is a big risk. I'm losing Guardian as well, which I don't love, but... Okay, so, <laughs> Diffuser Heart, that's, that's the end of our round, so, uh, next round, what does this do? Randomise, oh yeah, that's right, awesome. Okay, um, so the monster's turn. So he's got plus two damage, plus two movement, and draws an additional AI card, so the first card that he draws is Repeating Bite gets an extra token. Uh, so he is now speed one, two, oh, what has he got? Has he got plus two speed? No, plus two, wow, this damage is cranked. <laughs> so speed four. Uh, on Narcissa. Narcissa cannot dodge. She has zero evasion, so she's been hit four times. Each of these hits is doing one, two, three, four, five, six damage. So we'll do the hands first. No, we'll do the we'll do the boots first. So she's dead unless I roll a lot of tens. So boots. A three. So three is a dismembered leg, because we've got plus one. Gain a bleeding token. Uh, we'll then do the waste. A five, which goes to a six, which is destroyed genitals. Gain a bleeding token. And this last one is a severe injury uh, of a three. It's enough to kill her on bleeding tokens but we advance to Stoneheart 3, which is very, very good. Even though she just died, which is not as good. Dead. Okay. Stoneheart survivalism? stone heart is, but I'm going to grab it out so I don't forget to level it up. Facism. Cool. Good card. Plus two to severe injury rolls basically means you can't die unless you get a head wound. Uh, Alright, now the unfortunate thing is we're going to get charged by the crocodile with a repeating token because this is the second AI card that he draws. Dumbledore will be our pri priority target here. Um, the croc is now speed 10. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. So Dumbledore's going to spend a survival to dash. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the croc is going to go to there, but that's at least going to bring him into range for everyone else to attack. Uh, we need some we need some poor rolls here. So three plus Dumbledore's got one evasion, so that's four plus six plus because of the grass. We can surge. Uh, so three hits, uh, sorry, the can thingy. Uh, so one of those is blocked, so it goes down to two hits. 
and we will see where these go. Hand and body will take six damage on the hands, and we will dodge the other one. Repeating bite goes on top. But we should be able to do a wound now. One would hope. <laughs> okay. So we'll do Dumbledore with his blood drinker. So it's two speed, which goes to three speed because of his plus one speed. His accuracy is six plus, which goes to five plus. So he rolls one hit, and that hit is a vasodilated, super dense location. The blood drinker is not frail. Uh, we have three bleeding tokens, so we are plus nine strength on that. <laughs> um, plus our nine, so 18 strength. Uh, so, oh, look, we wounded. Draw a coagulated hit location. Oh, perfect. And put it on top. So we lose this repeating bite, thank goodness. Uh, it goes to the discard pile. And Dumbledore has had his movement. No, he hasn't done his movement yet. Um, he, get, he loses a bleeding token when he does a wound. And he will move diagonally, one, two, three, four, into the rear. And then he's going to surge. No, he's not. He's done. You know, he'll go to here. Then he'll swing again with the uh, axe. He doesn't have faces and no. Yeah, yeah, he's fine. So the Blood Drinker Axe, uh, three swings again, two hits this time. One is this location, we know that's the case. One is this location. Um, we're anything but still, so that's a wound. He has no luck. So one wound. And this one. Uh, that's still a wound. One wound. He loses both bleeding tokens. Then he's going to spend a survival to dash. He's literally done his dash. I've made that joke so many times. Oh, he's dodged. And he's going to move into here and he's going to level up. Find the castle. Uh, done and done and done. Three wounds. Okay. We'll move over to uh, Harry. So Harry's going to move. Neville, I should say, not Harry. He's speed seven because he's insane. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, five into the rear. And he's going to swing with the shield. So it's one speed. The shield is hitting on an eight plus. Goes down to six plus because he's too accuracy, which goes to five plus because he's in the rear. That's a one. He has a reroll token. Do we use it at this point? Or do we say he's not going to die? Yeah, we use his reroll token. That's cocked. Come on, yellow dice. Don't fail me. It's an eight. That's a hit. Um, so he's only strength six. So, oh, geez, he still needs a... Still needs a decent roll here. Come on, Neville. Come on, Neville. A nine. Nine and eight, 17. That's a wound. Great reflex triggers. 
Uh, we've got the shield proficiency point. Neville's had his turn. That's not Neville, that's Neville. Dumbledore's got his axe proficiency point. Now Neville's not going to spend any of his survival. He wants to stay at the top. Uh, and when a monster moves away from you during your attack, he gains Relentless 1. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And he's there. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Nagini, do we want to try and get into range and use your whip? She's the guitar. Yep. She's got absolutely no defensive tech, so we don't want her to be the target, so she can just wait. And she's got no shield, so we'll go her. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's going to be uh, him anyway. Right, that's the end of our turn. So we'll add another token to Diffuser Heart. Monster's turn, draws an AI card. He draws Barbed Tail Whip, the closest threat in range. He moves and Synchronic Attacks. So he isn't going to get into range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we'll dash with um, Dumbledore. So next turn, Dumbledore dashes, and he will dash one two to here, is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, he needs to dash to here. So the croc will go and he will come up short. So his turn is over. And then he will do another attack. Threat with the most tokens in range. Who's got the most tokens? Um, unfortunately, the most tokens is Ginny because she has a survival token. Mm. So speaking of, she will spend a survival to dash. She will go one, two, three, four, five. And the monster will go to here. So it's speed two, which goes to speed four. The accuracy is three plus. Is she deaf? No. Uh, yeah, it's tens. It's on tens. So there's one hit. Uh, Ginny doesn't have a shield. She will dodge. So that's no damage. It's the end of his turn. Uh, we have a front on. So we'll do Ginny. She'll move to here. She'll spend her survival token, so she gains her survival back. She gains tenacity two. And she will swing with her um, blue is whip. Is that 
right with her whip. Indeed. Uh, I don't know why I rolled three dice, but that's three hits anyway, so it'll just be two hits. One is the front location. Ah. Oh. Uh, the sparkling eyelid. Uh, so the whip. The whip is eight. So we're looking for a seven here. Really love to have my guardian. Uh, there was a per there was no perfect hit, so we suffer a brain damage. a nine that's a wound is it a crit no that's good <laughs> suffer a wound and then this one's a reflex unless we can roll a 10 on this one seven and is it eight seven and eight is 15 that's a wound as well uh, it is a reflex though and she has already dashed so we'll do the wound So far, three brain damage, four brain damage. Uh oh, she is terrified. And then move uh, two spaces forward. So she's going to go one, two, three, four, five, and be knocked down here. And he's there. Okay. So she's terrified. So that's problematic. Um, green, Nagini, with the guitar. Bit of luck. She is insane. So she will find the castle. One, two, three, four, five. Love that ability. And she will swing with the diamond scab guitar. She does not have luck, so she's rolling three dice to hit on a six plus, five plus in the rear. Goes to four plus because of the accuracy buff. Three hits. Does she have any perfect hit things? No. No. So specialization guitar. Cancel reactions on the first selected hit location. One, two, three. Uh, Reflex on this one, I think, is the one to cancel. Uh, we are sharp with the guitar. Uh, so that's a crit. Well, okay. Uh, Gain the priority target token and discard a mood in play. Not ideal. Just a person with no armor. <laughs> See if we can crit the next one, eh? Well, it's eight. It's a wound. Sixteen. So it's not a failure. Another wound on the guitar, and then this one this would be a crit. Would I be better off of doing? Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, so, vasodilated, coagulated hit location. Oh, we get it in the rear. Perfection. Um. So she will spend a survival. Again, he's done. He's done. He's done. You know, he's not done. He's not done. She's done. Uh, we'll spend a survival to... to... Oh. 
So with these with these coagulated hit locations, you're automatically an automatic failure. I wonder if Qatar specialization allows you to ignore that. I feel like it doesn't. I feel like I can I already know that. I feel like I read that already. But let's go and read the croc. I feel like Qatar specialization means you can ignore the failure reaction, maybe. So I reckon we'll spend a survival to surge with Nagini. That's fine, we'll dash. She hasn't dashed yet. Does she get her survival back? No and no. She's in the right spot. She'll swing with the Qatar. One, four. And four two fours are two hits, fortunately. Ooh, lost tail would be good. Um, critting on a nine. Uh, that's a wound. Can't crit this location, but we can roll a thing, which we do not. That's it. She has the priority target, so she is in trouble. More trouble than the early settlers. Uh, we'll do uh, Harry. Not Harry, Neville. Why do I keep calling him Harry? He's going to use Dome Buster. Dome Buster! So this is the first time I've swung this weapon. He's got his shield proficiency point. So he can swing the Dome Buster. It hits on a three plus because he's plus two accuracy. He's in the rear, it's two plus. It's a six. The hit location he gets is a Vaso Dilated. So his strength on this is 17. So he wounds on anything but a one. But if I roll a three plus, I get to do two wounds because of surpass five. So it's an eight, it's fine. Oh, critical, doesn't matter. So. Draw a coagulated hit location and place it on top of the hit location deck. That's the left side. So that does two wounds thanks to surpass. So that's him done. I will use Dumbledore now. He has find the castle. He is insane, and he is speed five. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, and then he's going to dash. Oh, no, he's already dashed this turn. Damn. So do we just swing anyway and accept the failure reaction? No. We'll go to here, and we will suck up some delicious blood. We gain three insanity. Okay. Crazy times. Alright, we draw an AI card, and it is Immortal Rain. All survivors adjacent to the monster gain three insanity. Nagini, one, two, three. Neville, one, two, three. All damage su su suffered by survivors is converted to brain damage. When a coagulated hit location is wounded, discard Immortal Rain. That is incredible! <laughs> Mood is in play. Draw an AI card. 
barbed tail whip. So it has to be the um, chick. Nantini. Uh, she has evasion two if she moves into. Yeah, so she's going to spend a survival to dash. Uh, we'll just do the next turn. Uh, she's going to spend a survival to dash. Got to remember to do this. And she spends the survival. Does she gain it back from the rawhide headband? She does. So she's going to move one, two, three, four to here. And the synchronic attack is going to land here. Neville's going to suffer knockback. One, two, three, four, five. He's knocked down. Priority target token is discarded. Uh, so this is a speed four attack. Nadini, uh, three plus, goes to uh, five plus, goes to seven plus thanks to the grass. So two perfect hits. Uh, she went diagonals in that dash. Uh, we have no shield, so we'll just see where these hit locations go. Head and boot. Now, uh, because of Immortal Rain, all damage suffered by survivors is converted to brain damage. So she's going to spend a survival to dodge. Does she get that survival back? She does. So this damage is uh, 1 plus four tokens, so five. So she suffers five brain damage. And that is the end of that attack. Bleed one, knock back five. There is no lost tail. That's that barbed tail whip done. We now draw the second AI card for the turn. Mocking bite, closest threat in facing and in range. There is not one. Closest survivor will be Dumbledore. So Dumbledore is going to take the attack. Does Dumbledore surge to get into the grass? I think he does. Or dash, sorry. One, two, three, four. He goes into the grass. Croc's going to move to there. Uh, he'll surge to also put up a block, I think. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't really need it. Nah, we'll do it. We'll do it. So Dumbledore dashes and surges. To put up a block on his shield. Croc, four dice, hitting on three plus, four plus, six plus. Uh, hits twice, one, two. Uh, one of those is blocked, so it's going to be five damage, which is converted to that, assuming I don't dodge. Gain the terrified status card. Mm. I'll dodge. So we take no damage. Start of our turn. Stands up, stands up. One, two, three. Move it into there. Swing with the dome buster. It's a hit. It's anything but on this location. And that's a nine, so that's two wounds from the dome buster. Done. Surpass five. One, two. The next time a coagulated hit location is drawn, is wounded, discard immortal rain, discarded. Um, whip, the cool whip. Move into the rear. Fingernail whip. Uh, she'll spend a survival. I'm sorry. She'll spend a survival to uh, 
um, click, oh, she has no insanity. Mm, okay. In that case, uh, she'll dash. And she will surge in the in the blood pool to drink from the pool. Uh, oh. She gains immortal. I don't want that. <laughs> Jenny gains immortal. Surge. I guess she'll use that action to drink from the pool again. Uh, that is a three, which is gain and insanity. She is still terrified. Not what we wanted to see. Our Qatar specialist, Nagini, has already dashed. One, two, three, four, five. She is out of range. No! Uh, all right. Dumbledore hasn't done his turn yet, so. He'll swing with the ax. Uh, blood drinker, he is plus one speed. He hits twice. Super dense location and the juicy gels. Um, that one, that's a six plus. Uh, what is the axe actually? Six plus nine, so it's 15, so it's a wound. And then this location is a reflex. The monster's going to move to the left. Oh, that's really bad for us. has got strength training, which is going to advance. Uh, we need a crit here. We don't have axe specialization, do we? Nope. Crit. Oh, I was so close. Thought about it. Um, we failed to wound. Did I remember to mark that wound? I don't think I did. Uh, okay, so... Roll to the left, collision, suffer four damage. So Ginny suffers four damage to her boots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He's all the way over here. What a guy. She'll move to here. She's knocked down. And that is the end of our turn. Monster AI card. Bard's tail whip, the closest threat in range. So it's either uh, Neville or Dumbledore. And we will do Dumbledore. He'll spend a survival to surge. Dash, I should say. And he'll move to here. I think that's going to synchronic attack Ginny, is it? So we'll have to go a bit further in that case. Yeah. Fine. Uh, so the barbed tail whip's done. And he does 
haunting bite. Survivor that last suffered damage. Is that Ginny? I think it is Ginny. Um, let me think. Ginny. Was it Nagini? Yeah, Ginny was the one who'd run over. So, I'm going to move to here. Ginny's going to take an Intimidate. You are knocked down and suffer four brain damage. One, two, three, four. So she's going to have to do a brain trauma roll. She rolls a seven. Um, and that she gains a uh, scaredy cat, fraidy cat. Seven is. Lunacy. Seven goes to eight, nine. New perspective. You are knocked down and gain 1d10 insanity. Roll low. Six. Six damage. Great. One to the legs. Uh, one, two, three to the body. And one, two to the head. She's alive. That's the end of his turn. It's our turn. She can stand up. She will do so. She is still terrified, but does she whip the fingernail whip anyway? Fingernail whip is wounding on a... It's not as good against vasodilated, unless it's vasodilated, so... Uh, I think we'll do Dumbledore into the rear with the axe. Hits and gains a perfect hit. Hits twice. Perfect hit is desperate strike. So he's got plus four strength to these two hit rolls. Parry hit location. That sucks, but uh, let's see if we can crit that one. That's a two, it's a wound. Boom. We need a 10 to wound this one. That's a 6. It's not a wound. Failure. Our weapon is disarmed. Gain a survival and an insanity. From being disarmed. Uh, Nagini, you are a good chance with your Qatar. So let's dash with you. See if you get your thingy back. You do. Have you got Call of Storm? You will move diagonally. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, into there. So she will gain that again, and she has Find the Castle three. She spent a survival to dash. She will attempt to swing with the Qatar in the rear. She hits twice. Come on. We get to cancel hit locations. So we'll cancel the hit location on this one, even though we should wound, given that we're sharp. It is a six and a 10. We put this one on top. And it is perfect for our turn of events. Take the wound and see if we can crack that one. It's a critical pseudo-penis. Thank you. We do get knocked back. We gain the pseudo-penis. I think we're about done, friends, because we just need one hit from the brave man, Neville. Yeah, knockback five, I don't care. We know this can't be the trap. Neville has the dome buster. He moves into the location. He just needs to roll. Ah, <laughs> oh, Neville. He hits, thank goodness, because he's plus two accuracy. 
and it's plus six strength to wound this location. So this will do double wounds unless we roll a you know what. We roll a critical and a random monster resource. And there's a lost humor, but it does two wounds. And Neville also has the scavenger kit, so we gain another random basic resource. Pale flesh, flat vein. Was it the outcome that I wanted? I did not like losing our scout. However, getting Stoneheart to level up was a worthwhile decision. I could have tried to prevent that from happening. Um, but yeah. Whew. So, let's get some resources, shall we? We have not innovated bloodletting. It's, uh, did we get the Grimjaw wound? We didn't. So nine, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When you gain this, gain the Phobophobia Disorder. Uh, we'll give that to the person with Immortal. And I will just check that I marked all of our... Everyone got a wound, which is good. Did I mark Ginny's Whip proficiency? Nope. Dumbledore's Axe proficiency? Yep. Nagini's Katar proficiency? Yep. Neville's Shield proficiency? Yes. Complete showdown. Five basic and one black lichen. Questions? Monster hide. One thing I don't want. One thing I do want. One thing I don't want. Um, that crocs that crocs a really great showdown, friends. Really great showdown. Two hunt XP, one weapon proficiency level. Return and advance the year. Regalism, survivalism, and regalism. Okay, butcher level two this year. So we'll just have to remember to keep some stuff in the storage. Now, our survivor that has the scout's lantern died, but the other people can pick it up and potentially benefit from it. This is a weird one, so I'm just going to assume that I can. So, plague. I don't really want a plague, actually, so we'll try for something else. Velvet Fog. I think we'll take Velvet Fog, actually. Let's slurp up. Oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. I can clear that disorder on Neville. Velvet Fog, Velvet Fog. Keep that out. Uh, we do have to make a roll on that chart. I will roll that now. I'll worry about which survivor it is later. It's a Lantern 10. Not many survivor to gain Juice Hunter. <laughs> Buck Juice. <laughs> Uh, I probably wasn't going to roll Neville. Actually, I probably would roll Neville. So Neville can become a juice hunter. Neville. Juice hunter. <laughs> Once per phase, you may take a detour to search for a nest of lantern bugs. That's pretty cool, actually. I don't know if I'd do it unless we needed the survival really badly. Uh, there's no story events this Lantern year, so we literally will just move straight into pumping some resources into my settlement storage. Basic. Bone, bone. 
Love Juice, Broken Lantern, Hide, question marks, question marks, hide, done. Now, we will add two fresh acanthus. Uh, cooking is a waste of time at Crocodile Tiny Ear. Crimson Fin, because we don't have any of the antelope resources. Crimson Bone. Is a real shame. Pale flesh, crimson bone, immortal tongue, veined glass, eye of the immortal, flat vein, pale flesh, pseudo penis. I really enjoyed that um, blood drinker combo on our Axe Master dude on Dumbledore. That felt really fun. Um, it's a straight up and down risk to walk into a fight with five bleeding tokens. If you gain one through the hunt phase at all, you die. <laughs> That's it. You die. So it may not be worth the risk especially given that I'm not using the full benefit of the Crimson Pearls, which is plus one strength for each of your bleeding tokens with fist and tooth, but... Mm. Something to mull over. So let's just review here. So we can drink deep of the bug juice, remove a disorder of our choice to skip the next hunt. We weren't taking Neville into the next hunt anyway, because it's against the Butcher. Barber Surgeon was our other option for curing a disorder. Monster Anatomy Study, gain one weapon proficiency once per lifetime. Cooking, no point cooking anything because we don't have the stuff. We are in the develop step, so we do have to build the dream. Uh, doesn't cost an organ to build the dream. So we'll roll and see what we get. Uh, we were just going to do it with, with uh, old mate Regulus, same time. We lose an endeavour. Uh, is nine right? Four returning survivors, six, seven. Anyone got Tinker? No, so we had seven, so we go down to six. We'll endeavour for five. Innovate, I should say. I need to make leather. Could do some nightmare training. Yep. Uh, so we'll spend our resources. We'll just use the basic. We'll go bone, hide, organ. Four of these we get. Storytelling, bed, hmm. shrine's good, shrine could be the answer, memento mori, take shrine. There is destiny. Well, once every hundred thousand years, a song where the sun does shine and the moon doth glow and the glass doth grow. Hmm. Uh, 
sacrifice goes into our invasion deck. I didn't remember to do stone stairs, did I? No, so shrine goes in there. We add stone stairs. Okay. So we'll drink deep of the bug juice. Is that a once per phase? No. Remove a disorder of your choice. That will remove fear of the dark. And he will skip the next hunt. I feel like he's okay with that. Um. Hoarder, don't really care. Hoarder will just archive one of these bug in uh, vermins. Gain a courage from the guinea from Hoarder. Uh, what other disorders are we concerned about? Oh, that one that makes us run sideways was really bad. What was the name of that one? Uh, yes, Directional Mastery. So we will get rid of that. She can't go out on a hunt. Leaves us with three endeavors to spend. Um, I don't know that we got too much we want to do with our stuff. Oh. So, how many returning survivors had that ability that I put in? Stone Architect. Stone Architect. So, two Stone Architects means we have a total dream project value of four. I'm not keen on trepanning. Do we want to gain a weapon proficiency by clearing an organ or do we want to try and face paint or do we just hold on for saga I didn't take saga did I I did take saga uh, our collective cognition is 26 so we do have Phoenix cuisine so let's pull that out and have a look at that Phoenix Cuisine. Attain the plausibility Phoenix knowledge. Uh, we leveled up to Relentless 2. We gained plausibility. Uh, nominate a survivor and then share it. When you suffer severe injury, stop trying to make me suffer severe injuries. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, might be time to bring out some new survivors anyway. If we wait till next turn to use Saga, we've got a chance of drawing a level three, um, which would be really cool. So, um, Vernon, you can get plausibility. done. Um, okay, Phoenix Cuisine added to the collective cognition. Uh, 
Relentless 2, plausibility. Just need to find the castle and Stoneheart 2. Both very, very good abilities, by the way. And then we have some pondering. Find the castle regalism. Sorry for having to do a lot of searching for cards. <laughs> Boom. The knowledge deck is amazing, and if I wanted to, I could use Scribe and manage the entirety of the knowledge deck on Scribe. I like, I like the cards, I like having cards, and I feel like it just, it's nice to have the cards, you know? Uh, it just feels good. Alright, so we're sharing plausibility at the forum. And then we're sharing four others. This has a Lumi token on it as well. Lumi. Four knowledges. All right. Find the castle. I like that. Tenacity. I don't like that. Strength training, I need to level that up because we're at level two strength training. And Blood Dancer three. So strength training needs to level up. Survivalism. So finally leveled it up. Finally remembered. <laughs> I may have already added it and not removed the other one. I did. Really wanted sword and shield style. Actually, fuck it, I'll add another one because that card wasn't supposed to be in there. Sword and shield, sword and shield. Relentless, I don't want relentless. Okay. Um, so we could add some more cards. Let's work out who's departing. I'm going to stop and have a think. All right, friends, we're going to do the thing that I forgot to do, which is our ponder. So Nagini has reached regalism tier four. And she has reached the invitation. So she gains plus five insanity and knowledge affirmation. So she's going to clear strength training and pick affirmation. Get that out. I've really got to remember to do all of my pondering before I flip knowledge cards for the forum. can spend knowledge insanity as if it was survival that is that is wild <laughs> roll the dice for us uh, Nagini we do have collective cognition 26 don't really want immortal but well it's a four we don't have 31 gain short and shield star Sword and Shield style. Mm. So I'm going to utilize that because it 
It's only a thirst of light, it's crazy. Uh, because it gets its free shield proficiency. Um, I'm not sure what the dream project is. I mean, I'd probably prefer to clear it off even though it's getting us a torment, but yeah. Sword and shield style. You gain. Because we have specialization sword, as the settlement has sword mastery, she's going to gain proficiency in shield and sword. Sword. Shield. And I don't really care about the sword, but... The shield, yes. Cool. Uh, collective cognition is not 31, but one luck would have been awesome. Her ability and likelihood to get to weapon mastery on Qatar is zero, unless we do some nightmare training with her. So we probably will do nightmare training to try and get her weapon proficiency up. She can spend insanity as if it was survival. <laughs> She's going to spend, spend insanity as if it was survival. Okay. Uh, who was the other person who was a returning survivor that leveled up? Was that Dumbledore into regalism? It was Dumbledore. He is rank two in regalism. And he will roll uh, Lumi. And he picks himself up a seven. Five insanity and combat conviction. Five combat conviction. Now, I believe we have that one already. I don't want this systemic pressure. Yeah, it's with a sword. We've got we've got sword proficiency. I, I really want to get axe proficiency though. Axe mastery. Mm, interesting, interesting. It's not too late for us to swap to sword, I suppose. Uh, Vernon's our new scout friends. Meet Vernon. The new scout, Vernon Dudley. Well done. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I go with some crap survivors to face the butcher or if I try and level up some weapon proficiencies. And um, Dumbledore would immediately get two levels of axe proficiency, which would be pretty good when he faces the butcher. If that feels like the right thing to do. Uh, I suppose I could give him a sword as a backup. Mm. Uh, something to mull over anyway. We didn't have any other ponderings to do. I do not believe. Nagini. Dumbledore. Ginny. Did Ginny ponder? Ginny did ponder. Ginny's going to ponder survivalism too. Ginny rolls a five. She gains tumble and she gains meat shield. So we'll definitely get rid of relentless and we'll gain tumble and meat shield. It's adding more trash to this deck, which is a real shame. But look, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely loving this, <laughs> um, this process, but 
yeah, the, the side of me is like, okay, how do I, how do I optimize this process? And I feel like um, you're far better off having less knowledges in the knowledge deck that are better than you are having lots of knowledges and, and trying to jank, you know, specific ones when you flip. So, tumble's okay. Meat shield is actually not too bad as a as an option. She has to use meat shield. Fine. Good work, Ginny. Um, and that's it, friends. We will... Uh, maybe I'll take the whip in. We will do some... Actually, maybe we'll, we'll try for whip proficiency. Uh, let's do some nightmare training with uh, Nagini. So she can spend three insanity and do a nightmare training. So let's roll on nightmare training. See if we can roll the eight, nine. We roll a four. Uh, nightmare training is spend a survival to re-roll. I'm pretty sure. Let's just double check. Nightmare training. So yeah, on a four, you may spend a survival and roll again. We're looking for an eight or a nine. So that's a 10. Gain plus one permanent accuracy or strength. We don't want that, but we'll do it again. <laughs> uh, spend a survival or die. There's a nine. Perfect. Okay, so that makes a difference actually. So Nagini gains a Qatar proficiency point. Gains a permanent accuracy or strength. We'll give her the accuracy because the strength will improve affect her here um, with her inferiority complex and um, we'll spend one two three one two so if we go out on a hunt now we will be able to get it by another successful nightmare training and then we've got our thing. So guitar mastery. Fuck, it's been a while since I've got guitar mastery. Actually, I forget what that does. I feel like it's a good one. I normally get axe. Guitar mastery. Gain one evasion token on a perfect hit with a guitar. Mm, pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good. Whip is really cool, actually. Ginny will do nightmare training as well. Come on, whip eight or nine. It's a two. She'll spend a survival and reroll. It's a one. She has to spend a survival or die. <laughs> She's good. All right. Uh, friends, that'll do for this one. We're facing off against the Butcher level 2. Usually feel like I can handle the Butcher level 2. At the end of that, we are going to get a whole lot of um, uh, survivors into our thing using the new saga. And that'll hopefully get us some level 3 philosophy. It will definitely get us at least one level 3 philosophy. Um, and we will start to... Uh, continue our team. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty jazzed. Uh, we'll see who we send. I might send in some dead guys, so, so some, some nuffies, so that we can actually guarantee a few of them dying and getting some, getting some endeavours. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed. Catch you all next time. Big dinner out.